are you doing, Sarge? Call of Duty games have sort of become as much of a yearly occurrence now as the changing of seasons. The first game in the series, Call of Duty 1, was released in late October 2003 and developed by Infinity Ward. As a notable entry in the now all but dead World War II genre of shooters, Call of Duty is about as far removed from the modern warfare series as is humanly possible. Call of Duty wasn't really that groundbreaking even for its time, and the only real difference between it and the Medal of Honor series was that it had a much bigger focus on AI-controlled teammates. This is something that is largely just for show, however, and despite being surrounded by dozens of teammates, these guys might as well be throwing confetti at the Germans because they're about as useful as a hat full of dog shit. The other innovation was the inclusion of iron sights, something that is kind of taken as the norm these days, but was pretty innovative for its time, having only been seen prior in another war-themed first-person shooter named Viet Cong. Much like the Medal of Honor series, Call of Duty has something of like a historical recreation feel to it, a lot of the missions are based around actual military operations at the time, though I'm sure they were sort of fictionalized just a little bit for the sake of the gameplay. The Quake 3 engine was kind of the go-to engine for games at the time, and visually it looked as good as any of the other shooting games released that year. But the main thing that differentiated it was the scale and grandeur of the environments themselves. You really tried to have as much stuff going on as possible across very large, expansive levels and focused a lot more on heavily scripted sequences to make everything feel much more cinematic. It took the concept of the D-Day mission in Medal of Honor Allied Assault and applied it to an entire single-player campaign. This would involve lengthy chase sequences in jeeps and trucks and lots of last stand moments where you held off against an insurmountable enemy force as explosions and gunfire tore up everything around you. The objective in a mission would also change on a whim, forcing you to fall back to a machine gun to provide covering fire, or instead pushing forward through enemy lines as bullets whizzed past your head. Running and gunning might work well for the first few levels, but if you tried that kind of shit later in the game, you'd get gunned down pretty quick. Even on the default difficulty, if an enemy gets the drop on you, you'll die within seconds. Enemies, on the other hand, can take a sniper around to the fucking chest and still get up for more, and it does feel a little bit unbalanced at times. Whereas most first-person shooters focus on a single character and only one storyline, Call of Duty had three, where you played as an American, British, and Russian soldier, each with their own respective missions. There's even a few missions where you get to control a tank, and these are pretty awesome too. The American and British missions just involve going around different military bases, planting explosives, taking out MG nests, and shooting dozens of the same looking enemy soldiers as they randomly spawn out of windows, hallways, and broom closets. Ah! It's not until you get to the Russian campaign where things really take off and the game truly shows some genuine originality. Obviously heavily inspired by the film Enemy at the Gates, the Russian campaign throws you into the mud-trodden shoes of a poor Soviet soldier as he's forced to storm the front lines, weaponless and completely outgunned. The scale and size of this mission is pretty incredible, even by today's standards, and it is hands down the best campaign in the entire game. You will literally watch dozens of your comrades being mercilessly gunned down by machine guns as you crawl from cover to cover in desperate search of a weapon. When you do finally get your hands on a rifle, you're still woefully outmatched and given very limited ammo, which makes the success of this mission all the more satisfying. It's a shame that they chose to put this campaign last because in terms of the technology and the narrative, it's the apex of the entire game, and yet most people would probably be bored shitless by the time they got up to it. And lastly, there's the multiplayer, with standard modes like Team Deathmatch and Capture the Flag, as well as modes like Search and Destroy, which are still in the series to this day. This is and always has been an absolute blast to play, and it shows you just how much the series has changed over the years. It can be a little bit difficult to find a match online without too much lag, well, at least for idiots like me living in Australia, but there are always games going on somewhere, which is a good thing. Overall, I don't really think Call of Duty's gameplay has aged all that bad. If you can look past the dated graphics and animations, then it's pretty much the same as any other military shooting game you're gonna see on the market, sans the regenerating health. There was an expansion pack named United Offensive, which was also released a year or so later. I'm still not sure where I stand on this. I mean, it's got some really fantastic large-scale fights which push the game's engine to its absolute limits, but it's also extremely cheap and just brutally difficult. 
Expansion packs were quite often developed in extremely quick periods, and they couldn't afford to spend too much time playtesting the content, which is why they're often not as good as the original game. The version sold on Steam is downright broken, and unless you have access to the original game files off a CD, you're not even going to be able to get this running at all. You also have to buy it separately to the original game, which kind of sucks, but I mean, that's Activision for you, right? It's not bad, but it can be really hit and miss, so play at your own risk. Keep your eyes open, boys! A lot of people seem to think that Call of Duty is responsible for killing the first-person shooter genre, and while it may be true to some extent for the franchise in general, it definitely doesn't ring true for this game. It's not as cheap as it should be for a 10-year-old game, and I probably wouldn't recommend buying it until it goes on sale. But if you do think it's worth spending $20 on a 5 or 6 hour campaign, then by all means, knock yourself out. And then you can see what Call of Duty was like before it became one of the industry's biggest inside jokes. 